And hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you enjoy this community and in interaction content. And today will be the day I earn that subscription. So from time to time, I like to respond to questions and comments, see what's on your guys' mind, try to respond, do some nice little interactions. And I had a little bit of time and thought, you know, it might be fun. So let's go ahead and do that. And then of course, I'll take questions from the live chats, super chat questions from the live chat, in addition to looking at stuff from previous videos. So let's take a look. So here are some of the comments that you guys have written recently. Mark said, while family law is often adversarial and emotionally charged, legally, it's usually fairly straightforward. Most property division spousal support and child support is determined by a worksheet, regardless of whether the spouse cheated or was abusive. Child custody can be difficult, but it's usually about facts more than appropriate legal standard. I, I, yeah, that's, that's kind of the problem, at least to my standpoint, but okay. At least to me, I think that's the problem. I think in many cases, a paraprofessional would be more than adequate, but obviously you get what you pay for. The fact that things are so factually determinative is more of an issue for me. At least personally, it's, I, I find I find law a lot easier to deal with. And with child custody, the standard is what's in the best interest of the child. And so then it just becomes a completely fact-driven emotional exercise. So I, I think that that situation, you really want someone to advocate for you. So I, it's just not for me, but maybe some people think about it differently. That's okay, people can think about things differently. Not everyone has to agree with me all the time. But I just think it's, you know, raises a lot of problems. But thank you for your question. The reason I, in response to U.S. President Biden signs a new order on abortion rights, the reason I enjoy your channel so much is whether or not I agree with your topic, you tell me the interpretation of law and how it applies. In this video, you pander to whom you believe your audience is, although I think it's much more different than you, diverse than you recognize, so disappointed. You constantly stress your personal views are not what they're educating you on. You're educating us on law. If you're going to change the focus of your channel to Kirk's views, by the way, it's Kurt, K-U-R-T, then let us know when we can switch a channel that's more interested in education than spouting. I'm so tired of people telling me what I should think. I want educated to make an informed decision. I thought that's what your channel was about. Well, you know, you can't please everyone all the time on all the topics. I give you my stamp, I give you my viewpoint and give you my legal interpretation, and I try to show you exactly what I'm thinking every step of the way. It's not like I'm hiding it from you. You're obviously able to suss it out. So it's not, I'm not trying to pull a trick on you. So I mean, you know, I'm gonna just continue doing what I do, and if you don't like it, that's cool. Hopefully other people will like it. I mean, you can't please everyone all the time, especially with 104,000 subscribers, you know what I mean? In response to, the president signed the executive order. Can't disagree with you more. The Hyde Amendment does provide and has provided fund funding for abortion in some sort of circumstances. It might well have. Uh, many, many people do not know this, and it's important for them to be aware of what it really says. Forcing a 10 year old to go through a complete pregnancy could cause a harm to her body for life. Perhaps, but doing an abortion will cause a harm to someone else's body for their life. So, there's that. Her skeleton is not formed enough yet to carry the baby full folded term. The child would have to be taken very early in the term in order for her not to suffer damage. It is it very likely she'd be able to go through pregnancy to the point where she couldn't? The child would be removed by C-section and not be able to live. So let's tor torture her some more. The issue isn't torturing her. The issue is that there's another life whose life is in the balance of the equation that you are apparently not in counting, you're not like, well, you know, the harm to this 10 year old is one harm. How about the 10 year old to the fetus? See, this is like the problem, or at least part of the problem. If you think that the child in the womb is a person with personhood rights, then, you know, that doesn't really matter as to much, too much as to the mother, who the mother is, right? Either the, if, unless your view is that the personhood of the fetus depends on who the mother is, which seems like a very strange proposition. Right. So if your viewpoint is the fetus is a person, then the personhood, then who the person of the mother is doesn't change the personhood of the fetus. So whether or not it's a 10 year old or not doesn't change the personhood of the fetus. So that is a person that now must be factored into this equation. 
And so that is, you know, a concern. If I, I, you know, either you think it's a person or you don't, I guess. Um, also, you would not have any idea what she goes through a woman's mind when she's told she's pregnant. I, I, I wouldn't know. No. I, I, I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure that you would know what goes through a man's mind when told that a woman's pregnant. I'm not sure what, why that go, what goes through her mind is necessarily relevant when it determines as to the life of the fetus and person of the fetus. What goes through her mind or his mind is not relevant to the personhood question. Um, my husband, who's very clearly pro-life in all ways, including being against the death penalty, and those are two entirely different issues, by the way, you can be pro-life when it comes to abortion and death penalty. It's really easy to do that, by the way. The fetus hasn't committed a crime, so they haven't done anything, so it's not really hard to justify. Like, if you believe in the death penalty, you can believe in the death penalty or not. You can, you know, you don't have to. I'm just saying you can split the difference. Um, does not believe any man should be involved in any decision regarding abortion, including making laws about abortion, period. Does your husband know what a man is and what a woman is? Maybe he can define it for us. That'd be helpful. He believes no man using the old-fashioned definition can have a clue about the impact that a pregnancy can have on a woman, again, using the old-fashioned definition of woman. Well, does any woman have any clue about the, defini about the impact a pregnancy has on men? I mean, th th does it have th their emotional and psychological impact as long as we're talking about what's going through someone's mind, right, as opposed to their physical harm? Why is what goes through the man's mind less relevant? As a, okay. My grandmother was married at 13 and her doctor told her she would die if she got pregnant before 15. She became pregnant at 14, delivered to my aunt at home alone at 15, woke up my grandfather, and then went to the hospital with the baby to make sure she and the baby were okay. Apparently, the doctor was wrong. She didn't die. She had to stay in the hospital for a month due to damage to her body during delivery. Abortions performed if... <laughs> Abortions performed in the first trimester do not tear the baby limb from limb. It still kills a person, if you believe it's a person. If you don't believe it's a person, this entire discussion is irrelevant. Right? If you don't believe that the fetus is a person, or at least a human being, with rights, this entire discussion is irrelevant. If you really believe that it's not worthy of any rights, then have an abortion at any time. What's the, what does it matter, right? If it's not a person, it doesn't matter. If it is a person, it does matter. That's at least the, you know, that's what the logician in me says. Oh, um, that's a scare tactic. I'm surprised you'd use that. It ends the life of a person. If you believe it's the life of a person. Your bias on this matter really showed through. Instead of using pretty neutral interpretations you normally provide. Well, either it's a person or it's not. You kind of have to take a position on that issue. I watched and subscribed to your ish channel as I'd like to hear your analysis, but not what I heard this time. Not just my opinion. I did hit the like button as I'd like to hear a different analysis. Thank you for your rating. Well, again, I'm not going to please everyone all the time. I'm not going to please everyone all the time when I analyze such things. Like you have to answer certain questions. And of course, the law, of course, could be wrong. All right, so an appeal to the law doesn't necessarily answer your question, of course, because the appeal could be wrong. The law has been wrong in the past about who are persons and not persons, as we're all too painfully aware. So the law's current definitions of personhood and who does and has not, does not have personhood doesn't necessarily answer the question. So it seems to me you first have to answer the question of whether or not the fetus is a person. If it's a person, you're terminating the life of a person. So that has a moral equation in it now. And so, you know, at least as far as I think, I think you can do it if you have an imminent threat to the life of the mother, because then you're just under self-defense theory, right? If a person poses an imminent threat to the life of another person, self-defense. So that doesn't change the equation. Otherwise, like, what's your rationale? Convenience? Difficulty, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, some sort of 
potential harm that's not imminent. So you want to take you want to take an action that kills a life kills a person now, based on possible future risk. I mean that's not self defense theory, so it doesn't quite work. Just me gives nine ninety nine. Thank you very much for your super chat. I have empathy for the ten year old, but the main thing I want to know in the equation is the name of who was the other person involved. I want to have a really long talk with them. I'm all about that too. Yeah, a really long talk or a really short one depending on your point of view, right? But abortion comes down to, at least it seems to come down to, the questions of the rights of the fetus. I mean, that's the first question you have to answer. I mean, maybe it doesn't come down to that, but it's at least the first question you have to answer, right? And so if the fetus is a person or otherwise a human being with rights, now that is something that has to be added morally into the equation. So in the instance of a 10 year old who's pregnant, Okay, but they're pregnant with a person that has rights. That's the entire premise, right? The 10 year old being pregnant and the 30 year old being pregnant doesn't change the nature of the fetus's rights. Maybe there is increased harm to a 10 year old. I'm not gonna dispute that. To the extent it is speculative and forward looking, it's not an imminent harm. So self-defense theory doesn't apply. If you do have imminent harm, then self-defense theory applies. And you can do that with a 30 year old, right? So it doesn't matter, like it's a fetus or a whole grown adult. Whole grown adult poses a threat to me. I have a right to take that person's life in response to an imminent threat. Their personhood is now a threat to my personhood and I have a self-defense right in the response to an imminent threat. So I'm just trying to analyze these issues as best I can. I give you my perspective. If you don't like it, you don't like it, but you know, that's where we are sitting. Thanks very much. Joshua asks, who's this clean shaven dude, man? A much happier guy. Uh, Molly says, but doesn't the whole fetus is a third party, I'm not sure they're necessarily a third party since they're one being acted on, but whatever, fall out the window with the argument of basic consciousness. The fetus cannot make decisions. Your ability to make decisions or not doesn't change you into being a person. If it did, a person in a coma who can't make decisions wouldn't be a person. And that's not the law, nor should it be. You know, so... Your ability to make, and for that matter, a brand new baby born can't really make decisions. You don't really have capacity to make decisions in any sort of sense that you would recognize when you're newborn, and certainly not when you're in a coma. So the, the, the ability of the fetus to make decisions or not, and also if you go with the ability to make decisions or not, you're, you're on your path to some sort of mental fitness standard. And if you're below a certain mental fitness, it would be okay to just kill you because you're not you're not smart enough or competent enough. That can lead to some dark places. Much like with individuals with disability that necessitate having guardians that assist in making decisions, as they legally cannot. Well, a guardian can't decide to terminate the life of their ward. I generally don't understand how anyone can choose, nope, 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 you have to do it, you have to. It's easy. Someone else's life is in balance. A guardian can't choose to kill their ward. When someone decides they don't want cancer to turn, well, they don't have to decide, they don't have the right to make a decision to kill someone else. That's the balance of the equation. Just sounds like a bleak pseudo, pseudo ethical argument. It's not pseudo ethical. It's just a straight ethical argument. If you believe the fetus is a human being and a person with rights, that comes with consequences. If it's not a person with rights, then do whatever the hell you want. It's just a clump of cells, as they say. If you believe it is a person with rights, well, okay. Now you have two people with rights in the equation. Now you have to balance those rights or at least consider them both, you know? So, I mean, there's that. Let me read some more stuff. Uh, Dan M says, women's lives and health are on the line. Women voters' wants are on the line. 
as well as the fetuses' lives and wants are also on the line in this equation. Tina and the world says, I'm in healthcare and I don't understand the 10 year old reference case. Well, I think the all time record for a pregnancy is five years old, if memory serves correctly. It would fall under the life of the mother, which is always recognized as an exemption. It might, it might not. You would have to wait until it's an imminent threat. I can't speak to that question intelligently. You couldn't do it in a speculative fashion. You'd have to wait until it was an imminent threat. But, you know, okay. The clause is if there's a choice of life, I've had this very thing happen with my first child. As a mom, my answer was you save the child. If you let the child die in perseverance of me, a lawsuit will be the least of your issues. Well, okay. I mean, if you want to sacrifice your life to save your fetuses or child's life, I understand. If you make a different decision, I understand. You have a right to life and you have a right to self-defense. If you choose to exercise that right or not, I understand. In self-defense. We obviously both survive, but as far as me, once you're pregnant, it's about the child. If you're talking about the situation with the child, then it's what the doctor thinks is a danger to the person who's now pregnant because she did not engage in a purposeful act. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. As to the ethics, it's irrelevant. Whether it's a purposeful act or not is irrelevant. There is now a life that's in question. Unless you want to take the proposition that a person who is born as a product of sexual assault is somehow less a person, which doesn't make any sense, right? There are a lot of people walking on the face of this earth who are adults, who were the product of some sort of sexual assault. Are they lesser persons? No, that's ridiculous. So why would they be lesser persons in, when they're inside the womb? That would be equally ridiculous, right? At least to me, their personhood status doesn't change once they're born. They're not like lesser persons once they're born, so why would they be lesser persons once they're still in the womb, right? So their manner of conception is irrelevant as to their personhood, which is the entire basics of the ethics, if you're going down that road. At least that's the, that's the generalized conceit of the position. Otherwise, nothing makes any sense, right? It doesn't really fully make sense I mean, it's a little, it's more difficult, at least, let me say. It's not fair to say it doesn't make sense, it's just more difficult. It's more difficult to make the case that abortion is okay if sexual assault, but not if not sexual assault. Because like, why are you splitting the difference when you are literally splitting the baby, right? So, uh, but there's some stuff there. All right, so skip that for the moment. Uh, Ginger says, oh, Brandon Lesko has gifted 50 memberships to the young civilians. Well, Brandon, that is an incredibly generous super chat. Thank you very much for all your super chats and all your support. It is super, super appreciated. Thank you very, very much for your 50 memberships. That is awesome. You are awesome, sir. Let us read some more. Ginger says, just one thing, if you're upset with the left using euphemistic language and think they should actually say what's going on, then the right needs to stop saying babies is actually a fetus. I'm comfortable with that. That's fine. I mean, the question isn't really whether it's a baby or a fetus. The question is more fundamental than that. The question is whether or not it's a person or a human being with human rights. I mean, that's fundamentally a question. Call it a fetus call it a zygote, call it whatever you want. The question fundamentally is, is it a person with human rights or not? Everyone gets scales, so many scales for so many people. Lance says, what is women's health when you don't know what a woman is? Love this. True. Paladin says, thank goodness YouTube is here to give me context on this content. What would I do without the ministry of truth? I know. Uh, J, J, uh, J.L. Hawkins says a barrister is more like a trial lawyer and solicitor is more like your typical attorney in the U.S. That is generally my understanding as well. Thank you. Corey says liberals are above the laws they're clearly showing us. And yeah, maybe. 
In response to the new law legal license, A. Henninger, friend of the channel, says, my first thought is this seems like a bad idea. I guess for super simple things like uncontested divorces. Yeah, but what if it becomes contested later? That's the problem, right? SR says, part of dumbing down of America, traveling medical technicians are now working in ERs instead of doctors. They're allowed to work alone without a doctor present, but under the physical supervision of a doctor of a couple days a week. Okay, well, you know, I can't really speak that intelligently to what is safe within the practice of medicine, but, you know, I have questions when it comes to the practice of law, which is more my field. And so, you know, in response to the President Biden signing the executive order, Steve says, thank you for providing a common sense view. You are quite welcome. Thank you. Uh, the New York Druid says, why did GOP legislatures vote against every amendment for extreme cases? Because the logic doesn't work. That's why. There's no logic in it. If you believe the fetus is a person, what does the log what does an extreme case do for you? I guess the GOP unequivocally supports 10 year old sexual assault victims dying from complications. No, they don't. If you have an imminent threat, if it's speculative, the GOP would not support that. The GOP, at least the hardcore, at least the abortion people, the, the pro-life people wouldn't support it, right? They would support an abortion when it becomes an imminent threat. Then you're in self-defense theory, but they wouldn't do it speculatively because that's not self-defense theory. Daniel gives $2 to say, how was the law to meet up on Sunday? Kick ass. We had six or seven people show up as well as the three of us, the three of me, Joe and Nate. So there's like 10 of us there and people came and people went, but that's about 10 people were there. It was fun. It was great. It was awesome. Have I read the Texas constitution? Not, no, not really. No, not in particular, but thank you for asking. I'm much more familiar with federal law than I am on state constitutional law. Mostly, not for at least the reasons that state constitutional law tends to track federal law. So unless you really need to get down to the nitty gritty for some reason, it's not usually much reason to read it, but you know, okay. Uh, in response to Arctic Doped, I think you should be a judge. You seem very reasonable and logical and even. Thank you. I am very logical and then reasoned, which I think is reasonable, but yeah. <laughs> can you see in the backstage if there's still memberships being doled out? I can't see anything more than you can. So, but it looks like they all were doled out. In response to President Biden, I have no understanding of why abortion is a political topic. It should not be a governmental decision. If they think pregnancy is God will, then make Viagra and other such drugs illegal too. God will. It's not quite the issue of it being God's will, at least. It's the issue of it being a person or a human life with human rights. That's the issue. At least for the pro-life people. It's a human life. That's the issue. It's a person. That's the issue. I mean... And that's the bottom line and everything else logically flows from that if you want to understand the pro-life position just understand that position and you're there now different people in the pro-life position create lines at different places but that's fundamentally the pro-life position what at whatever point you cast the line at what point human rights and personhood attaches human rights and personhood attach and everything else logically flows so allowing abortion in the case of sexual assault doesn't make any sense because it wouldn't change the nature of the personhood. Allowing abortion because the mother is extremely young doesn't make sense because it wouldn't change the personhood of the fetus, right? And you can't just murder a person, right? You can if there's an imminent threat, that's self-defense theory but there has to be an imminent threat. That's self-defense theory. So if you want to understand the pro-life position, just understand 
that for the pro-life person, they're literally talking about a person to their mind who has the same rights as an adult walking around or more the point, a newborn baby or a person in a coma or so forth and so on. That's fundamentally the pro-life position. Everything else logically flows. It's quite a logical position if you accept the underlying premise. I mean, you know. Uh, there's a pro-life position and pro-life position. You're pretty intense on versus the other. Yes, I have my views, and I express my views, as I do on my channel. And I explain the law regardless of my views, as I have many, 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 many times. Many times. Express the law contra to my own personal views or my own political views. I, You can rely on me to give you a legal analysis straight up. I do all the time. If I think that this law doesn't make sense, or I think this law raises problems or whatever, I always give you the law straight up, no matter what, what I think politically, you know, I'm, I hope you guys know that you can rely on me for that. And to the extent I give you my personal views or political views beyond that, I make it real clear. So like, I, I'll give you an opinion. That's what my legal opinion is, regardless of my politics. I mean, I hate, I hate, you know, Chevron and Wickard, and I'll tell you it's the law all day long while I tell you it's bullshit. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I, I do this thing all the time. It's, it's fine. Let's see what's going on. Oh, AZ is hosting a space. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I think it's a Twitter thing. Let's see if we can find some comments not in relation to the abortion topic, because I think we've exhausted our philosophy on that. Let's take a look at some older comments. Let's see what we got here. Lots of stuff on the abortion topics. Lots of people have comments, which I suppose isn't surprising. Do we have anything that's not related to the law licenses or the abortion? In response to Trump gets wish in appointment of a special master, where is the join button? Well, if it doesn't appear on your iOS device, then watch for the link in the chat, chat or there is a link in the description of every single video that you can click on. You know? Um... Thank you very much, Detain, for your thoughtful and intelligent comments. One of my moderators can please handle that. That'd be great. Thank you. Let's see. By the way, as we've discussed before, I don't know whether or not I've passed the Texas bar yet because the results aren't going to be out for like a month and change. I don't think they've even said exactly what date they're going to be out. Last time they said something, they said mid October. So I don't even know exactly what that is because they didn't say, so I won't find out for a month and change. So we'll see. In response to guards letting male prisoners loose on women, thank you for covering this. You're welcome, of course. DECP in chat says, love the clean shaven look. Now grow it back. You look so much like my ex. It's so freaky. Maybe I am your ex. Maybe I am your ex. And this is all part of my very long, this is part of my very, uh, very deep long-term plan to win you back the voice you hear may not sound like your ex's voice but that's because i've used voice altering software and this is all to get you back Ooh, exciting <laughs> could be could be 
In response to the new legal license, if people can go pro se and cannot afford a lawyer, opposing this is just paycheck pay check protectionism. No, I, I don't think that's quite true. I, I think that um, it's when you get a professional, if you get bad professional advice, there's all kinds of liability there and stuff like that. Better looking than your ex? Well, thank you. That's very kind. So there you go. Maybe you just have a type. Maybe you just have a type. Eh? Eh? Just saying. Just saying. Okay, in response to new legal license, ask Rob. It's his field of practice. I could ask Rob too. <laughs> David says make it stop. Never. In response to immunity denied to two police officers, bad ruling by the 10th Circuit. Probably quite true. That's probably correct. In response to a new legal license, fact-driven and emotion-driven are both things that are not the purview of lawyers. And it depends on the lawyer. Some lawyers are better at it than others. Am I going to be in Law and Dragons soon? I was in Law and Dragons. I did a guest spot. Did you miss it? You should go back and check it out. It was on the week before last. In response to the special master thing, oh, by the way, did you guys see the news article that said the uh, the the, dr the the judge that appointed the special master, the, the judge that appointed the special master is engaged in obstruction of justice? Did you see that article? It crossed my Twitter desk. Some people are saying that the judge who issued the restraining order injunction is engaged in obstruction of justice. I thought that was pretty, that was pretty cute. Oh, that's pretty cute. All right. In response to a new legal license that would allow non-attorneys to practice, always thought everyone should be given a real estate license and law license at birth. Okay. In response to a new legal license, how about we reinstate combination of reading law then exam? Wouldn't necessarily be opposed to that. I think we missed a lot when we went from the apprenticeship system. In response to Anita Her Herbert, this is so distressing. If it's so important that people trust law or society breaks down, corruption should be dealt with emphatically. Too many cases are showing lack of professional training. Appreciated that for sure. Karen says one may not recognize Kurt on show. He looked different than he does now. Hey. Just 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 rocking that clean shaven look. Oh yeah. In response to uh, the new legal license thing, when people are spending tens of years and hundreds of thousands of dollars in family car with lawyers, it's hard to say the lawyers are helping. No, that's usually because the sides are antagonistically fighting each other. The lawyers can't do anything other than what their clients want. And if the clients are battling it out, it can get pricey. In response to the new legal license, the right thing to do is beef up legal service agencies. Could be. In response to Trump gets wish of appointment special master, too much grift in this video. Was there? Was there too much grift? I didn't think so, but okay. In response to the new legal license, better solution would be to simplify no fault divorce, no alimony, binding arbitration on assets, debts, no court orders child support. In many cases, dad as primary breadwinner gets cussy as he can afford the kids and possibly court order therapy to work out the wife's issues. Well, that's a hot take for sure. Someone has been uh, beaten up by the world and has some fairly aggressive views when it comes to the fault of divorces so okay in response to the non-legal license cw says it's what happened in medicine basically with nurse practitioners and physicians i take no particular position on it in medicine because you know i'm not a doctor I don't know the degree to which that's a good idea or a bad idea. I, I suppose in a lot of ways, it's it, there's a lot 
you can segregate issues maybe simpler in in those issues but i don't know when it comes to people's children i'm not sure there's really such a thing as a simple case this is the thing like you know uh km says what's the argument for executive orders by the president in democracy republic um the fundamental well you have to remember what executive orders are or at least keep in mind what they are Executive orders are orders to the executive. They're orders from the, the president to the executive. The rationale for executive orders is that the president is head of the executive branch. It says so in the Constitution. It says the executive branch shall be in the form of the president. Everyone who works for the president is like parts of him. So he's giving orders to the executive branch, which he's in control of. And he can't give an order that's not in compliance with the law. So he can tell an, he can tell an agency to execute the law in accordance with law. And to the degree that there's variability, he can tell them which way to go because, you know, he's the president. So he can say, oh, I want you to do this. I mean, the rationale for executive orders is now, of course, a lot of executive orders try to do more than executive orders allow for. And then they get struck down by the courts. But as long as the executive is giving orders to the executive on how to properly apply a law that's within the bounds of the text, then, you know, you're good. How was the Sunday catch up? It was great. It was great. Uh, LRM says, are there any legitimate online schools online law schools not to the best of my knowledge no i don't know what they're doing in response to the whole COVID thing with response to distance learning and stuff but no i'm not aware of any accredited online law schools uh the university of american samoa this was this was a uh this was a plot plot fail of breaking bad jimmy jimmy mcgill apparently got his law license from a correspondence school from the University of American Samoa doesn't exist so yeah a relentless pursuit of shade says I used a non-lawyer to do all the paperwork for my child support cases after paying an attorney for $25 for my divorce three years later the ex decided to challenge child support with one kid left at home at age 16 it wasn't worth paying my attorney, but the non-lawyer was able to do all my paperwork and file it for me for a couple hundred dollars. Well, okay. Hopefully that was legal and hopefully it works out for you. Isn't the argument on the other side authoritarian totalitarian? No. It's what the constitution says. The, the constitution says that the president has the executive power. Uh, I mean, we could look it up verbatim. Uh, hold on one second. Article 2, Section 1. The executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. I mean, it's right there. The executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. So when the president is giving an executive order, he's using executive power that's his to order the executive, which is his, to execute the laws, which is his responsibility. So, looks okay to me. In response to up in Connecticut, well, since I've been sub to you for about eight, nine months, I thought it was about time I made myself legal. I'm not a member. Well, thank you up in Connecticut for hitting that beautiful, beautiful join button. We do appreciate it. Thank you. 
Kurt, is that a new hat? No, it's the same hat I've worn in every video that I've worn a hat ever. It is, it is my hat. It is the, it is the best hat ever. It is the greatest hat. And I will have the bot tell you all about the hat because I've set up an alert for that so that it will tell you about the hat. Hopefully that will work. Uh, in response to the legal license, Utah already has a system. Yes, a couple of their states have played with this to limited degrees. So what hat? <laughs> That's funny. We should get LEC for watching law tubers, continuing legal education. CLE, oh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Hat did not apparently work. Not a fan of indoor hats, aw. Yeah, apparently the bot is not working right now for the alert. Oh, well. Commands, yeah, it's not seem to be working. The bot commands for this channel are available at this. Let me take a look. Uh, no, there's no entries apparently. Well, my right then. You're finally home? I am home, yeah. What's going on with Virginia's constitution after reconstruction? I, I asked, God, I haven't read it that very much. Yeah, I, I, I did have a hat command at one point. But uh, to, to the point of what it is, this hat was made by hand. It was made by Texas Hatters in Lockhart, Texas. It is, the style of hat is called Gus. That's the style of the hat called Gus. It is eight and three eighths, and it is made of 100% beaver fur, and it is kick-ass. $10 to give me thanks. Well, that's really nice. I give you thanks. Say, thanks. You bet. That's nice. Thank you for that super chat. It is appreciated, as always. Best hat ever? It is a pretty good hat. Just need some Texas fly cowboy boots to go with it. I don't know if that's really my spiel with the, with the thing, but, you know, I do like the hat. Syracuse is the most online and most prominent. Thank you, Primer. That's more than I knew. You prefer Stenson's? Well, the problem was, the problem was, well, first of all, Really, you prefer a Stenson, a Stenson to something that was handmade? I'm like, okay, first of all, I'll, okay. Second of all, I couldn't buy a Stenson. They don't make them big enough. I couldn't buy any hats off the shelf. They don't make them big enough. No hat from any hat company fits me. I went to many a, te I went to many a Texas cowboy shop and none of them could fit me. So I had to go custom because I couldn't find any hats that fit my big ass head. So big is too big. My head, my head is literally too big for Texas. I thought this state was all about the big and the large, but no, my Texas, my head is too big for Texas. That's what's going on. We need to get you Akabura hat. I don't even know what that is. Too much brain? It could be. Let's take a look and see what this is. Akabura hat. What is this? Australian handmade hats. Okay. There, okay, there's a, there's a hand, they're a handcrafted hat company. Okay. Ooh, Calaman. Ooh, Fawn. That looks nice. All right. So let's see if we can get a hat. Uh, I guess I want country. I want to get myself, let's see. Ooh, Snowy River Black. Ooh, that's a good looking hat. Calaman. That's a good looking hat. What else you got? Lifestyle. What's lifestyle? Leisure time, Regency Fawn. 
Special and Heritage. Er, let's get Western, of course. Western. Rough Rider, Black Hat, Sombrero, The Croc. How much is this hat? 61? I don't know what 61 translates to in U.S. sizes. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's not big enough for me. Not even Cavendiers? No, I can't find... No. Cavendiers? Let's take a look there. Let's see if they make hats big enough. Western wear and boots. Let's take a look. Let's see. Hats. Men's hats. Let's see. Wool Western hats. Felt Western hats. Okay, we want we want a felt hat. So the Stenson. Yeah, we, we need okay, we need a hat. They this they literally don't have sizes big enough. The the largest they go up more sizes? Oh they have a eight almost. Ooh. No. No, the largest they go is up to eight. Eight doesn't work. And so I'm, yeah, it's on Lamar. No, the largest they have on their website is up to eight. So it doesn't really work. Alcaburg makes custom hats too. Yeah. Okay. Well, Texas Hatters is a good hat. So I mean, you know, it's a good quality hat. I think is is all we need to know. Neon orange hat for the win. I don't know about all that, man. That could be a little bit much. In response to the non-legal license, it breaks the ivory tower of lawyerdom. I'm all for it and think all law practice should be this way. Okay, well, you know, I have concerns. In response to Trump gets his wish, thanks for breaking this down, Kurt. The shave and haircut look amazing, by the way. You're welcome, and I'm glad you approve. Thank you very much. Your hat is great. I like the color. Thank you very much. Commercial hats only go up to 8.5. Yeah, well, eight, eight and a half would do the trick. Eight and a half would do the trick. If I could find eight and a half. I commented before the hot tub. Yeah, Andrew coming on with a hot tub was uh, not my idea. So I, I don't know about all that. In response to Arizona does it, Washington does it, and California does go for it really in 2023. Other states have played with it. I have my I have my concerns. You're looking sharp. Thank you very much. The new legal lawsuit license, I think this is an awful idea. I have concerns. In response to Trump gets wish of appointment special master, because of course they do, that's not an objective statement. It's a, it's a humorous one. It's one of my humorous tropes. It's like, because of course they do. And it's like, you know, yeah. Legal world's version of a nurse practitioner, maybe. I'm 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 doubtful. Thumbs up. Jail officials retaliate against the woman for speaking up, leaving the lights on for three straight days. Yep, they did that too. Pretty bad stuff. Family law attorneys are barely one notch above ambulance chasers. Four hundred dollars is a reasonable rate for an attorney. It it is, no big deal. It's just four hundred dollars an hour, and divorces can be on for more than a year. Dear Lord, I mean, yeah, that's you know, legal legal services are expensive. Legal services are expensive, and four hundred dollars an hour for a trained attorney, you know, is not unreasonable. Ophelia says, if you can find anything, you bring it my way. Yeah. Yeah. So my hat size is eight and three eighths. That's just below eight and a half. So if you find anyone who sells hats in eight and a half or close to it, let me know. Okay. I think that's all for now. $150 an hour minimum or rather $1,500 for up to 10 hours. Hey, if you can get a lawyer for $150 an hour, that's great, man. More power to you. I think that's all for now. I just really wanted to do a quick little stream, quick little hangout, and just really talk to you guys, and I'm really enjoying it. And I thought you did too. You know, we can just do these things from time to time as as we as as we have fun and as we have time. But you know, I have some other things to do, and uh, you know, I want to um, just thank you all, and thank you very much again for Brandon for the 50 gift memberships. That was really really cool. 
and I'll try to remember to update the the uh, uncivilians list so that I won't forget so that uh, it'll be correct for next time. All right. So until later, my friends, I hope all's well. Cheers, my friends.